Welcome to Full of Grace Ministry. Here today we're talking about blood. And I like to say, why blood? Why blood? Why did a man have to come and die for our sins and we had to make him bloody and put him on a the cross and crucifixion. Why blood? Why blood? We're going to go way back into the Old Testament where uh, so many people think God wants blood. God needs blood uh, for their salvation. God needs this blood. My friend, uh, the the day and hour we're living in this nation, there is blood everywhere being shed. My friend, God does not need blood. People needs blood. And we're going to read out the Word of God showing that God wasn't even pleased in their sacrifices and giving blood. But there was a man one day called Jesus, a mighty name called Jesus that that came to earth one day. And it's a name that God wants. It's a name that God needs. But for some reason, when the Son of God came down here on earth, we wanted to make it bloody. Uh, We think we needed blood to please our God. Um, The church itself wanted to kill our Lord Jesus. Why? Why blood? We're going to go into some readings. Listen closely. God wants to give you a name. God wants wants to give you a power. And only power is in that name that gave the blood for you. We should not give blood to God. He loved us so much He came down and gave you blood for your sin and salvation. We're going to read a little bit and thank God for the name of Jesus. We lift Him high. We know every time uh, that we um, minister any sermon, we find out that it's like a wheel in the middle of a wheel. It leads us back to Jesus Christ. Your love, your joy, your peace, your happiness, your mighty God, and your blood is in that name. Praise God. Yeah, I was wondering, uh, this has been on my mind for a long time, I was wondering why in the Old Testament that they had to have blood. And all these animals, can you imagine going to church or synagogue on Sunday and there be all kinds of animals in line and they take their blood, they kill them up on the altars and sprinkle the blood on the, on the altars and uh, it stunk. The smoke of these dead animals stunk going up in, into heaven. Okay, because this day and age, if a person sacrificed an animal, like a chicken, like voodoo or something like that, or a person up on the altar, they would consider it devil worship. So I was really confused. But in Genesis chapter 22, where God uh, puts Abraham to the test, he uh, is doing this because he wants to show him that this is murder and you don't have to do this. And he wants him to be different than, than uh, uh, these idol-worshiping people, like Mayans, for instance. We was talking about that this morning. The Mayans, they would cut people's head off, and you'd see the blood run down the hill. Well, these people were ignorant, and they thought that the blood of bulls and goats and sacrificing things that they loved was going to save them. But God said he had no pleasure in them. So when He we go into uh, uh, Genesis chapter 22... You remember that in those times that we're telling you, when men worshipped, they built altars of uh, earth or stone. And laying upon the altar, it was a gift to God. An offering was generally a sheep, a goat, or a young oxen, or some animal that was used for food. And the offering was called a sacrifice. But the people worshipped idols. And often didn't, didn't... People worshipped idols, often did what seemed strange and was very terrible... They thought that it would please their little gods, their little G's, if they would offer a sacrifice of the most precious thing that they owned. And they would take their own little children and lay them up on the altars and offer them to gods of wood and stone, which were no real gods, but only images. And God wished to show Abraham and all his descendants that that were after him, that he was not pleased with such offering of those uh, living people killed upon the altar. And God took... The Abraham to teach him so that his children after him would never forget it. And, and at the same time, he wished to see how faithful Abraham would be according to his commandments. And Abraham would trust God as we should say, how great was Abraham's faith. 
Okay, now listen to this. I'm going to read this scripture, Genesis 22, 8. The prophet Abraham prophesied this whenever he laid Isaac up on the altar. Isaac was wondering where the, uh, the lamb was. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself, himself, himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Okay, the definition of himself is the one identical to him and his normal self. Amen? Okay, now listen. First John, first John, not John, first John 316. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. We ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. What happened is, and I'm going to turn this over to John. What happened is in the Old Testament, sin and death is in the blood. And Jesus had to become sin. That meant the shedding of his blood. It is a shame that he had to be beat and uh, his skin falling off his arms and, and, and body and shed blood. And we showed a video of Carmen. We're playing that one later. You need to watch that. It was gory. This is the magnitude of blood. But if it hadn't been for Jesus shedding his blood, we couldn't have no separation of sin. That was the only blood that was ever required. Yeah, when I read the story about Abraham, I, and uh, it says that God wanted to, uh, Abraham to put his only son upon a sacrifice. Oh, I said, Lord, why would you need blood? Why would you want to kill, kill? But it wasn't like that, my friend. He prepared a sacrifice. He stopped Abraham and took the knife away. Put your knife down. Praise the name of our God. We no longer need blood. And we didn't need it back then because we're going to read where God was not pleased of this blood. It did not take sin away. Um, I've heard so many even ministers say, God wants your blood. God needed a sacrifice. He needed a sacrifice. No, my friend. People needed a sacrifice. People wanted to please God so much that they was killing. They was even killing the animals. But in the Word of God, He was not pleased in that sacrifice. It did not even save them. It was under a law that man made up uh, to sacrifice unto God. Let me tell you, my friend, when you really find out who God is and, and the love of God, He loved you so much that He became sin for you and he he sacrificed his own self. Um, he became bloody. So you stop the killing and stop the blood once and for all. But my friend, let me tell you, we're talking about blood today. But let me tell you, it's a name. It's a name given. And that name is Jesus. Praise God. Remember, it's the name when you call upon the blood, uh, power in the blood. It was a name with that blood. Just like when you call upon God, there's a name with that God. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my pardon, this I see. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing, cleansing this I my plea. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can... Uh, for sin atone, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good that I have done, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness, nothing but, but the blood of Jesus. Now by this I overcome nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh Lord, now by this I reach my Home, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Glory, glory, this I sing. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. All my praises for this I bring. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, did you get it? Jesus, 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 Jesus. Yeah. Oh, Lord my God. We, oh, if Jesus Christ was here right today, right today, would you be the first one to put the nail in His hand? Would you say, oh God, I want to please you so much that I'm going to take a nail and put it in the hand of Jesus for a sacrifice. My friend, it's not nothing you can do to uh, take away your sin. Jesus, the mighty God, loved you so much that He came down to earth 
and, and sacrificed His own self. He gave Himself for you so you cannot turn around and bloody Him, put a nail in His hand, and say, God, accept our sacrifice. Oh, praise God! He loved you so much He became your sacrifice. He did it for you. It wasn't nothing you did. It ain't, it's not nothing another church did. I've been in churches. As me and Trish travel around, we've actually said amongst people that takes a, a cup of blood, uh, which is wine, but they actually say it's blood. And here's what they do. God, accept our sacrifice. My friend, He did it for you. You cannot do it yourself. You cannot offer blood to God. God Himself prepared the sacrifice for you. Think about it. Think about it. You don't have to say, God, accept our sacrifice. I'm putting a nail in your son. I'm stabbing your son in the side. I'm putting crowns of thorn on his head. You cannot do that. God is not pleased with that and it's sinful. But Jesus loved you so much that He became sin for you to stop this mess. Praise God that He shed His blood. Praise God that He shed His blood. That you didn't have to take blood to God because God loved you. He became a man. He became a man. So what do we say about that? Power in the blood. Power in the name. Power in the name that gave His blood. There's a mighty man named Jesus. So when you think about it and you need a little blood, what you need is a name. You need Jesus. How can you accept the blood without the name of the blood? It's the name of Jesus that died and gave His precious blood for you. You cannot offer blood to God. He did it Himself. You cannot save yourself. God came to save you. You cannot give blood. He gave His own blood. Praise the name of God. Read on. That's the hidden mystery. That's the hidden mystery. Listen, He stopped Abraham from sacrificing His son, but God Himself became a son that He would bring royal blood and a royal priesthood into this world. Amen. That His is the only blood that could save once and for all. And He didn't just do it for mankind. He done it for the animals too. You know, He stopped a lot of killing of animals. He did that. Amen. Praise God. Okay, I'm going to go into Hebrews chapter 10. This is going into the uh, Old Testament telling the type and the shadow of things to come. Okay, Hebrews chapter 10. For the law which is the Old Testament, having the shadow of good things to come and not, and not the very image of things that can never, never with those sacrifices which they offered year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. It, they couldn't be perfect by the sacrifice. It did not work. It wouldn't work. For then they wouldn't, they would not have ceased to be offered. Still be doing okay, it. Okay, still be doing it. Because that the worshippers once purged should have had their no more their conscience of sin. Okay? But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is this is this verse four. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sin. Not possible. Wherefore he cometh into the world and saith, Sacrifices and offerings thou wouldest not. He didn't want it. He did not want people to do it. Who was that? Okay? Jesus. But a body hast thou prepared for me. So back when he talked to Abraham and God himself was a sacrifice, he had already prepared an offering, a body. And okay? Verse 6. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin... Hast thou no pleasure? God has no pleasure in it. Listen, listen, this is who it's all about. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. Who's it written of? Jesus. He's the word. Amen. It always goes back to Jesus. Always. To do thy will, O God. Above when he said, sacrifices and burnt offerings and offerings for sin thou wouldest not, neither hast there any pleasure and are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come in the, to do thy will, O God. He 
take away the first. He take away the blood, the old blood of bulls and goats and sprinkling of the altar and the stink and the stench of the sin. Death and hell and death and murder is blood. And they murdered our Lord Jesus. Had they known who he was, they wouldn't have murdered him. That's what the Bible says. He's going to read those scriptures in a minute. He taketh away the first that he may establish the second, by which we are all sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. (coughs) Excuse me. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man... Who Jesus had offered one sacrifice for sin, sat down on the right hand of God. That's beside his body, his right hand. And from his forth, expecting, expecting till his enemies are made his footstools. By one offering, he had made perfect forever them which are sanctified. Wherefore the Holy Ghost also made us witnesses that he said before, This is the covenant I will make with them. Those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their heart and write it in their mind. And their sins and iniquities I will not remember anymore. Now, where there is remission, there is no more offering for sin. So they stopped it back in the Old Testament. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest holies by Jesus Christ. By a new, by Jesus Christ. Listen, Jesus Christ is the center. By a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is to save the flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God. Jesus is our high priest. Let us draw near with a true heart, full assuring, having our hearts sprinkled from the evil consciousness and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold therefore the profession of our faith, not wavering, without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke and to love a good works, not forsaking the assemblies of ourselves together as a manner as another, as so much more as you see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully after we've received the truth, well, who is truth? Jesus. There remaineth no more sacrifice of sin, but a certain fearful looking for judgment, that fiery indignation which devoured the adversary, he that despised Moses' law without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much more punishment suppose ye that ye ought to be worthy who had trodden under the foot of the Son of God, hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified. An unholy thing, and hath done it spite unto the ho- Spirit of grace. For we know that in him saith, Vengeance belongeth to me. I will recompense, saith the Lord. The Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. But call into remembrance the former days in which aforetime you were illuminated. Ye endured great fight of affliction. Okay? Partly, whilst thou were in the midst of gainslay, both by reproach and affi- afflictions, and partly while ye yes, became companions of them that were so used. For ye, are, ye had compassion of me and my bonds, and took me fully, spoiling your goods, knowing that ye yourself, that ye have in heaven, and have endured substance. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, in which ye have great recompense and reward, for ye have no need. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye may receive the promise. I'm going to stop right there uh, in in verse uh, 36. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, my friend, blood. Think about it, blood. If Jesus was right here today, would the church still say crucify him? Because they already was worshiping God and everything. But if they knew who Jesus was, they would not have crucified their Lord. What Lord? One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. The Lord God came down as a sacrifice. Praise God. In 1 Corinthians 2 and 8, which none of these princes of this world knew, 
For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. We have people today saying, The blood, God wants blood, God wants blood. I remember reading where Jesus was on the cross. And here's what he said. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. They thought they were sacrificing Jesus Christ to their God. And you know why they've done that? Because being a man, he maketh thyself God. Crucify him, crucify him. My Lord, it was a bloody mess that someone would crucify the Lord Jesus Christ to see blood just pouring all over Him. But they wasn't doing nothing toward God. He laid His life down freely for you, my friend. He gave His blood freely. You did not give it to God. You cannot say, God, accept this sacrifice. Take this blood of Your Son. No, God Himself prepared a sacrifice for you. Now, the point of the matter is, it's not the killing of the blood that was shameful that our Lord had to go through that. He, he, he sweat drops of blood. He prayed. He prayed in the, um, in, 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 uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus was in agony over His crucifixion. But He did it for us because greater love than no man than this, that a man would lay down his life for his friends. But we still have people today Wanting to give blood to God. Wanting to give blood to God and say, Oh, it was the blood, it was the blood, it was the blood. My friend, it was a name. His name is Jesus. He loved you. You wouldn't have no blood if it was not for that name. It, you would not have no sacrifice if Jesus didn't become your sacrifice. But we read in the Word of God that it was actually God Himself. God Himself. So you don't have to take blood to God. He done it Himself because He loved you to stop the bloody mess. It was a bloody mess. But it was a name of Jesus Christ that shed His precious blood. Jesus is in me. He is in my blood. He's part of me. He is in my life. I have been saying it all my life. And it stands out above anything else. Jesus. Silver and gold I have none, but such as I have I give unto you. Church, it's when we start working and praying together that real healing takes place. We are healed. We are healed. We are healed by name. By name that loved you so much that He became sin and shed His blood for you. He didn't do no sin, but became sin. He became bloody. Oh, He became bloody for you. Oh, Jesus, thank You. Thank You for stopping us from being so bloody that You shed Your own blood for us once and for all. Praise God. When you make a mistake and the devil comes and tells you you're no good, you don't have to take on the guilt and condemnation He wants to put on you. No. You can immediately confess your mistakes to God, thank Him for giving you and cleansing you with his, the blood of Jesus and move forward in victory of His grace and forgiveness. Now, what washed your sins away? Jesus. And he loved you that He gave His precious blood. But isn't it a shame that He had to get bloody for our sins? Isn't it a shame that we don't love Him enough and say, thank You, Lord Jesus, my Lord, my God. When Thomas looked at his hand and somebody put a bloody nail in his hand, he bowed down and said, my Lord and my 
God. My Lord and my God. Isn't it a shame that you want the blood, but you don't want the name? Isn't it a shame that you want salvation in Jesus, but you don't know salvation only comes from God, and you've got to accept Jesus as your God? Because there's no salvation if He's not your God. Oh, praise the name of God. Praise God. Luke 21, 16 through 18. And you shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinfolks and friends. And some of you shall they cause you to be put to death. There's blood again. Blood. People likes blood. People likes blood. God is not pleased in blood. Praise God. That's why He came down and put a stop to it by His own blood. You'll be put to death and you shall be hated of all man for the blood's sake. For the name's sake. For the name's sake. Jesus' name. But there shall not an hair on your head perish. And your patient possess your souls. <laughs> My friend, it was a name. Thank God for a name that He given us. He did not need sacrifices of blood on the altar. He did not need uh, us to go and find us a, a perfect, uh, blemish, um, uh, spotless lamb. Praise God. Wouldn't that be hard to find today? My God, even people's not perfect. But my, 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 He became this perfect man named Jesus. This perfect man that was named Jesus. The perfect lamb of God. That takes away the sins of the world. Now was it the blood? It was Jesus that shed His blood. It was Jesus that shed His blood. Be thankful that He loved you. That He sweat drops of blood. He prayed to the mighty God that was within Him. He did not want to go through it. And when He did go through it, because men did it to Him, because of their sins, He prayed, Father, Forgive them. What did they do? They made Him bloody. They thought they was uh, doing God a service. And some of you would be put out of the synagogues over the name of Jesus. They thought they was doing God a service and they just blooded His Son up. They blooded God Himself up. Oh, think about it. Think about it. They put Him on a cross. He hung there on the cross. This is what people has done to Him. And let me tell you what kind of people did it to Him. Church going people. God worshipers. They thought that if they healed Jesus and blooded Him, that they was doing God a service. That they was doing God a service because this man was claiming to be Him. So who was they worshiping? I tell you who they was worshiping. Jesus made it very clear. He told that church, Your father is the devil, and the lust thereof you will do. And he was a murderer from the beginning. Praise God. You cannot kill Jesus Christ and make him bloody and say, God, we did it for you. No, 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 no. The true one living God did it for you. You cannot do nothing to enter in. He did it for you. He became man and shed his own precious blood. This ought to make you rejoice. This ought to make you happy that you don't have to kill no more. You don't have to murder no more. What would it be like if somebody today said, God told me to murder my son? Would you say that was God? Jesus said the Father was a murderer from the beginning. My God, when Abraham was fixing to murder his son, Jesus said, their father was a murderer from the beginning. Praise God that He showed up on time and said, I'll be the sacrifice. And Abraham laid down his knife. Yes. Praise God. Yes. It was a name. Yes. It was a name that laid down His life. Yes. Why did He have to shed His blood? Yes. Why? The man knew no sin and he became sin for you. 
People wanted blood. People needed blood. They tried to uh, satisfy God with blood. There is God worshiping people today that believe that if they kill, that they get rewards up in heaven. They get virgins up in heaven. Uh, what was that tell you right there? Jesus said, and their lust thereof you will do. They are already lusting for they even get up there. They're waiting for virgins. There is one true living God. And here on Full of Grace, we call Him Jesus. He came down in the person of His Son and He shed blood for you, which He did, should not have to do. He should not have to shed that blood. Why? Because He, did, he, he, he was in agony. And He prayed to the Father and said, Forgive them. If you needed blood, He wouldn't have to say, Father, forgive them. If you had to kill him, put nails in him, make him bloody, he would not have to tell God to forgive you. You was doing something wrong when you put him on that cross. You was making him bloody. You were saying God needs this sacrifice. God needs this blood. God needs you to accept him. And to accept him, you need to accept the name that he's given. One name under heaven and on earth. Jesus Christ. I have something to say. Uh, back in the Old Testament, whenever in the beginning in Genesis, uh, when he created the animals, he told uh, uh, Adam to take care of the animals, watch over the animals. And uh, then, uh, can come to find out later on, they start sacrificing the animals after the fall of man. That's murder. That's murder. Anything that's got blood flowing in its veins and the breath of life in them, that's murder. I can't imagine taking my parakeets to a synagogue every Sunday trying to uh, atone for my sins. It's murder. But see, this is the whole point. There is a God that loved you. And we know, for God so loved the world that He gave that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe on Him, not shall have her who stabs Him, murders Him, puts a crown of thorns on Him, whosoever believe on Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Full of grace ministry, we believe on Him. We believe on His name. Praise God. It was a shame when they made Him bloody. It was a shame people said, we need blood, we need blood. There's power in the blood. There's power in the name of the blood. What good is the blood without the name? You better know your God, that He loved you, that He gave His blood. See, it's a turnaround. Not that you give blood, that you accept the name that gave that blood. There is no greater love than this. Uh, He sacrificed Himself for you. There was a name that did that. There was a God that did that. Praise God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I want Jesus in me so much that when a little demon mosquito bites me, that He runs away. And he's saying, there's power in the blood of Jesus. Jesus. Because he he, he would like blood. But the blood of Jesus? Let him call the name of Jesus. Because what good is the blood without the name? There's power in the name of Jesus that gave His blood. And His blood can flow through you. His name flows through you. And that name is the one that shed His precious blood. Does full of grace believe in the blood? He believes in a name that gave the blood. Oh, praise God, if it wasn't for the Almighty God loving us so much that He came to earth, Emmanuel with us, and He gave Himself for us, what would we do? Why did it have to be a bloody mess? Because people likes blood. They think God wants blood. He does not have no pleasure in blood. There's no salvation. It's said out of the Word of God of the blood of the goats and the bulls and the calves and all that. Now, but there's salvation in a name. There's salvation in a name that gave His blood. He gave His blood. And it's a shame He had to do it. But He did it for the sins of us that wanted blood and needed blood. He showed you how bad a person you was to put Him on a cross. He didn't have to do it. 
He didn't have to. He said, no man takes my life from me. I lay it down freely. Oh, the church thought he uh, got rid of him. The church is still trying to get rid of him. Oh, they'll accept his blood, but they won't accept him. They accept his blood because they want to give the blood to another God. They don't realize that God Himself came down. Uh, but you cannot say, Oh God, we give you this God to satisfy you. It's not like that, my friend. The one true living God loved you that He became man and He gave Himself for you. Greater love than no man than this, than a man lay down his life. I'm so glad I got that kind of God. I'm so glad I know that kind of name that would actually become bloody for us because we did not have no sense and we want to bloody even the church house. We want to put him on a cross and say, God, he, this man is making himself God and we're going to kill him. And come to find out, they said, if we knew who he was, we would not have crucified our Lord. He was a God who made himself a man, which is the flesh, and uh, became our sacrifice. God Himself became our sacrifice. This morning we want you to realize that there's power in the blood. But there's power in the name that gave that blood. Don't leave the name out when you say the blood. But my friend, even the name of or the blood will help you without knowing that He's the Almighty God that prepared Himself a sacrifice. The Almighty God did that for you. Don't turn around and say, Jesus, uh, Father, we give you Jesus. No, the Father gave you Jesus. The Father gave you Jesus. Praise the name of our God. Uh, the Father gave us Jesus. The Father lives in us by the Holy Ghost of Jesus. The Father gave you love. The Father shed His blood. The Father is your resurrection. That Father's name is Jesus, the mighty God. The God that's inside of Jesus. There's not another God on the outside of Jesus. He said, I stand alone. There's none else with me in Deuteronomy. He knows no other. So, the God that's inside of Jesus is who we worship. Not one way off in a distance somewhere. We worship the one that's in Jesus Christ who came into the world. Emmanuel, God with us. Praise God. So when I say, Jesus, thank you for the blood. Oh, God, I want to say, Father, you loved us so much. Not that you killed your son. God's not bloody. He's not going to kill his own son for your ignorant sins. He came down in the person of Jesus Christ and died for you in the flesh. But you cannot kill God because He's omnipotent everywhere. But praise God. We got a God that loved us. We got a Father that loved us, loved us. Not that He sent somebody else, another person. God Himself came down. My Father showed His face, His sacrifice for us in the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, known as the Son of God. I know where my God is. I know like Thomas said when he touched his hand, my Lord and my God. He's my Lord. He's my God. He'll be my Father. He's my my Prince of Peace, and He's the one that shed the blood. I must go on because I can keep on and keep on. Praise God. You know, if you don't know this Jesus, I say this every week. Repent. Okay, Matthew twenty-eight nineteen is fulfilled in Acts two thirty-eight. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you too shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's promised to you and your children, and many as the Lord God shall call, and all those that are far off. Amen. If you are a true believer and you're seeking God, He said, "Them that seek and knock, it shall be open." My friend, no matter what you read in the Holy Word of God, whether it be salvation, whether it be Father, whether it be Son, whether it be Holy Ghost, whether it be power, whether it be blood, um, it will lead you back to the name of Jesus. Even in the beginning of the world when it was created, if you search and you knock, it will lead you back to Jesus. So here on Full of Grace, we have power in a name that gave His blood for you. You are saved. You are healed. You are delivered in a name that loved you so much. We give you Jesus. 
the Son of God, the Almighty God in the flesh. He's all around you by the Holy Ghost of God. And the Holy Ghost of God, just call Him Jesus. Just call Him Jesus. He's the Spirit of the living